Hello YouTube, it's a chilly morning. It's right at freezing. We're expecting freezing rain and drizzle. I cannot tell you the date. It is the 12th, I think. Yes, it is. So, we're supposed to have some freezing rain drizzle. In the Tuesday, kind of let up. Wednesday, maybe a snowstorm come back. But it's going to be nasty. If you look at the weather map, what's crossing through here, uh, above us is just unbelievable. Coming out of the west, the blizzards and snow, foot deep. And we're in this drought area, so we're still being droughted in the wintertime. Just showing you, this is a quarter inch that was in there, okay? Well, this is only 3 sixteenths. This is that nice sharp thing that came with that set with that handle. If you watch that pretty ready lacquered whatever handle. We have to find a way to adapt this. It's going to be an awl. We don't want it to spin on us. We do have that. We could maybe put a pin in there. But this is not very tough stuff. This is a knob I made by gluing pieces together and whatever. So I'd have to go back a little bit. I'm sure it's a curtain rod knob. Uh, we could put it in as far as where it says Japan. It's like not quite one inch. Might as well give you the particulars here from now. Sorry when I do it on the camera. See, it's about a two inch knob. About two inch. Up one. So it'd be nice to fit in your hand. And these are super sharp. I'll show you where I took my diamond file. Okay. Let's get, we got to get right in here now. See where I diamond filed it. Okay. And down on the end, they kind of bring it in. They add like an extra tape. I don't like that. They, they get down here and they ground like a different angle. We're, we're trying to flatten it into one long inclined plane and use some big machine as words. We don't want it to dip into a point. We don't want it that way. We want to be able to maintain this. So we've been filing that out and filing it straight. So with the diamond file, you got to remember, this is not really flat. If you look at this, it has a curve to it. Concave on each side. Get down and I'll explain it again. This kind of concaves right here. It kind of dips in. So we're working on the outer edge or more or less this edge. But it works good because as we're going over this flat like this, we're only really hitting the middle and the outer edge. I think you can see what I mean because it dips in. But we're doing the X pattern. We're doing it this way. We're doing it that way. Then we're doing it the long way. And we checked it with the straight edge. Okay. My edge is more straighter than theirs. Okay. Mine is straight on with the ruler. Okay. When theirs isn't. There's dips down out here to make that little sharp point. No, like I said, I want it one long, even. And see, even manufactured tools, look up here. Like when I make homemade tools, see how that's longer than that one? So don't feel bad if you make a tool and do that. See that? That's longer. And that's longer. That's shorter on the left. And that's longer. So we've got one short one. One short, short, well, we got what, what, two short ones side by side or what? Yeah, don't worry about that. And we're not going to polish it. This will be always be filed. In. This will be polished, the shank. No, you can make these out of screwdrivers. If you spend your time, we get back in focus. We're trying to practice our focusing more. We're trying different backgrounds instead of this. Of course, I do always say this looks better. I know we're wasting time on here, but we're teaching you how to make one of these at the same time. A big one, you'd take your four and a half inch grinder on a vise and you'd grind the taper first. Then you go to your belt sander, and I use my disc sander, and I'm really particular when I make one of these. I spend way too much time. My welding pick hammer I made homemade, I made with four sides, so it's easy to sharpen on the fly. So you're out welding, it gets dull, and you man, you just zzz, and skip. I think Scout Crafter taught me that. Skip. If you do one side, skip. 
to the other side to be square, see? And then skip again. These are going to be razor sharp on the edge. You could probably actually cut your finger when I'm done. In fact, when we're done, we're going to rub it on some cardboard or paper and show you how sharp that gets. So, off to work. We talked about it now. Uh, we come back, it's going to be glued in here. We'll explain how we made that bigger. Uh, we got a notch and we might put some kind of pin in there so don't rotate. We're not going to do a hole. We'll just maybe cram something in there. So, let's talk. More work. We got all our little stuff in here to measure with. So, here we go. Okay, here's the plan. We wrap tape around here as far as we want to go in, and it's like a 30 seconds over what size the hole is, which is about a quarter inch. We got this piece of wire wrapped around here, and we're going to put epoxy on this, put a coating to embed this spring, okay? So, this notch, can you see the notch? There you go. So that gets filled. Then we're going to grind it down. Okay. We're going to want the wire wrap a little bit tighter. Then we're going to grind it down. So we know it fits in the hole. And we want a little bit of that wire exposed. Then we'll put more epoxy glue in there. So we take up the... That way I don't think it's going to spin. We're not going to use on anything rough surface. You know, rough, whatever. We know we could probably still bore a hole in a little thin piece of wood. Uh, we did some experimenting. That's how sharp it is right there. And let's find the white part here. That's how good it'll scrape. Some sharp edges. That's how good a scraper that is. It's not razor sharp, but see the white where I scraped the paint off? Oh, I fixed this. I had to put two pins in it. There's a pin to the left was never there. I had to make another hole because this thing kept coming loose. Because we use it for a scraper and we use it for a tool for trimming up our candle. So we want to dig the wax out and move something around. So it's a multi-use tool of why it's always burnt like that. Okay, let's get to work. We come back, we'll see what the epoxy looks like and how it fits in the hole. Okay, we got some epoxy holding that. And you see where the spring still sticks up, where that little groove is? And it just fits in there with that on that wire wrapped around it. Uh, we, we taped this up and we've learned. We've got tape and stuff. We've learned to do this because... We've had epoxy go all over before. It gets on your fingers. gets on your paint job. Just protect it. It's just a little bit of tape. And like I said, this is the bigger than the hole. So if it smushes out, it'll smush out there or in here. With This is taped up good enough. I mean, it's not going to go far. We kind of pinch the tape together. You got to do that. You got to protect the surface like that. You get epoxy on your fingers. Like me, I mean, it's, it's all over. And I don't worry about it because I got acetone to clean it off. And you can use a scrubby pad when you go wash your hands. Okay, we're ready to take a break. Let that finish curing a little bit more. It's still a little sticky. We're going to add another layer and shove it together. And we are done. It's all epoxied in there. Nice little sharp awl tool for boring holes and in it. You could go into a tin can with this. A soup can, you can go right into it. And a pop can, of course, with cardboard, lightweight wood, bored a hole. And you could actually make one of these if you spend the time. I got a little bit of epoxy oozed out and got onto the paint. But it's a working tool. And this is a knob I'd made way back when, last winter. So, if I remember, it was a curtain rod knob. I'm going to go review the other video and see what... It has to be one of those curtain rod knobs. And I used the other one. I, I still got another video I need to get done. Uh, 
where I just made another tool. I, I'm get I'm getting so far behind. I get stuff. I just shove it in the computer, and then I forget to make a video of it. And that's how I lost that Sunday in the shop episode. I had it all on the computer and just put it in a folder, and I didn't name it Sunday in the shop. It was just a tool, just whatever screwdriver. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Look for the pictures how I build it, and we'll see you next time.